If you want to know how to identify what is wrong with your orchid, this is the first part. I went to my local construction store and instead of buying what I should have bought, I bought an orchid. They're called jumper orchids. They just jump into your cart without you looking. So I, you know, impulse buy, I bought it, brought it home. But after I took it out, I realized, oh gosh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews and thank you for watching this video at Orchidaria. And this series is called, What the Heck is Wrong with My Orchid? I'm going to go. <laughs> so I've had three leaves fall off. There are three leaves on it and this leaf is in terrible shape. So something is wrong. So the first thing we have to know is, is the problem abiotic or biotic? And what I mean by that is abiotic is some, is the cause is non-living. So I have a watering problem. I have a temperature problem. I have a weather problem. So I already know that this orchid went through one problem, which is the cold weather. To transport this, of course, I had to carry it to my car and yeah, it doesn't like it. So the yellowing could be because of the cold. Now, once it's in my home office, that shouldn't progress. So if it does, it's the problem is not cold. It should not turn into this. This is where the bacteria come in. So if I have any bacterial rot, it will be biotic. If it's biotic, then I have either bugs or insects or I have mold or the cause is a living problem. And when I bought it, yes, it's in the middle of winter. So that can be a huge problem. Orchids do not like frost. If you buy them in the winter, it's one of the biggest mistakes. It's like, Go to my local construction store. Promotion, get one orchid and you receive five different problems. So it's not midnight related. It's not abiotic. Midnight has not touched this orchid yet. And I really shouldn't let her in here because if she touches that and then touches my other orchids, it will spread because I already know this problem. Hey, yo, okay. So I already know that this orchid is not midnight related because this is depressing this is depressing i mean i'm doing this because i'm trying to get through winter here <laughs> and i need a i need a new plant in my life so get home and it dies on me so i already know one sign also is the stem of my orchid is yellow now that is the most concerning part to me because leaves orchids will grow back Roots, orchids grow back. The stem is not as easy to grow back. And once the rot spreads to here, it is incredibly hard to treat. So I'm going to check it for bugs and insects. When I took it out of the pot, well, the potting media on here is sphagnum moss and it's tightly compacted. In the nurseries, they can easily miss them and ha or have a drip system in place. So this potting media is perfect for them. It's not perfect for us when we grow in our home environments. So once I take out all this sphagnum, this tightly compressed sphagnum, and you will be amazed at how much sphagnum is in here. This will let the orchid roots breathe a little. And I'm doing this because I'm looking for pests and insects. Most of these roots are actually pretty good. This root I'll cut off because it's totally dry. And the other little yellow roots are fine. They're just yellow because they haven't had sunlight. They've been in the wrong kind of pot for a long time. So that leaves, what is this? This is disgusting. And also you notice I am doing this. Do not touch, do not treat one orchid and then go back to your collection and touch another one and touch another one because bacteria will spread like wildfire so i know that i my hands are already contaminated and i shouldn't touch even the cat until i wash my hands 
and treat this orchid and keep it away. That's why we do quarantine with orchids that we get even through certified nurseries and, and established orchid vendors. Keep your orchid in quarantine for at least two weeks away from your other orchids because sometimes the signs don't show right away. So I know it's not insects. I know it's not animals. I know it's not mold and mildew because there are no white spots on these roots. There's no snowflake type material in Ooh. Oops. inside this, this sphagnum moss. So the problem with the discoloration on the leaf can be either two things. which are lack of fertilization. Either they have a fertilizer deficiency or they have too much fertilizer, which can also go from one extreme to the other. Either this plant was not fertilized or it was over fertilized. And if it's not fertilization, then it's bacteria. Now, how to know if it's a fertilizer problem or a bacterial problem? Number one, if it's a fertilizer problem, the problem will be on the discoloration of the leaf. Is the middle of the orchid leaf lighter and the sides darker? Is it pulling? Is the older leaf darker or the top leaf lighter? Now, each one of these is going to make a difference in how you treat it. If you have spots on your leaf and the spots are growing, they're increasing in size, that is probably bacterial. So I can already tell that there is a discoloration because the side of the leaf is green and the middle of, I don't know if that's showing up in the video, but the side of the leaf is still green and the middle of the leaf is yellow. So it's pulling something out of the middle of the leaf and we'll get to that in a little bit. That doesn't actually bother me as much as these spots do because these spots started very small and they just increased and increased and increased. Since they're growing, I already know that it is a biotic problem and it is spreading. If I do not do something with this leaf quickly, it will spread to the whole orchid. Now this yellowing of the middle of the leaf is called chlorosis. And that happens because the chlorophyll is dying off and the chlorophyll is what gives the green ice green rich color. It also helps the orchid photosynthesize. So the chlorophyll is dying inside this leaf. And why is it dying? That's what we have to figure out. Now, once the leaf tissue dies, and, and you can see here, the leaf tissue is already dying. The underside is actually easier to see. It's dying off. And this, of course, has already died off. You can see it's it's it turns transparent and it just spreads like wildfire. When it starts to die, it's called necrosis. So you have chlorosis and necrosis. And that's important to know once we get into the nutrient deficiency part, because some nutrient deficiencies will only cause chlorosis, while others will cause necrosis. If this video has increased your knowledge in orchid care, please give it a like button. That really helps me to know what videos to do more of or what videos to stay away from. And also, if you want to keep track of what your orchid is doing and write it down and have like a calendar of your treatment methods, I am working on an orchid diary. So in like a journal or a notebook or a system so where that you can keep track of what is happening to your orchid. So you can know, oh yeah, this orchid had this last year. It's probably gonna be prone to it again next year if I don't change a few things. So that is under construction. It's almost ready. If you want to know more about that, go to orchidaria.com slash orchid journey. There's a little dash in between orchid journey, just like that. It is in the links. By the way, I hope to see you in the comments below. Tell me what your orchid is doing and if you've had this and how you treated it. In any case, if you have not seen this video down here, it talks about how to identify a healthy orchid 
and to analyze if your orchid care is adequate or not by these 13 signs click on this video and this video up here is going to be another tip about caring for problems with orchids